Hey there guys, thanks for joining me on yet another creative mode episode. I've been spending a couple of days now building a new large ship. After all the compliments you guys gave me on building my previous large ship, the um, Colonial One inspired ship. This is a ship inspired just by my imagination really. Uh, it's taken me a couple of steps. I started with something small and I kind of made it bigger and bigger. Um, I wanted to use the new conveyor system and I've done that in this uh, in this ship in a very cool way I think. Um, I made three variants of this ship as well because this is the first one that I built and then I decided you know this looks like a ship that you can really uh, make modular so I made two other more uh, variants and I'll show you them later on but first I'm going to show you everything about this ship. Uh, like I mentioned I'm using the conveyor system so basically uh, as this is a cargo vessel I've called it the Eclipse Mark 1 um, it uses the conveyor system to load and unload stuff but before we look at the conveyor system that I uh, integrated into the into the ship, let's just have a look at the design itself. Um, it started off without the little top bit. Um, I had the cockpit in the middle. However, when I was looking at it, you couldn't really see where you were going. So I decided to put a bridge on top and that made it even cooler. Uh, we've got quite a few engines, uh, quite a few thrusters, I should say. We've got three side thrusters in the front and four in the back right here we've got two forward thrusters six uh, down thrusters and I believe six up as well yeah here we go six and then we've got one reverse thruster however it's a large one so that's really cool as well I love the design. We've got most of the cockpit or most of the, the ship in the back. Um, you know, look at the uh, uh, refinery that I put in top to give it some mechanical detail. You know, you this is supposed to represent an engine-like uh, thing, really. Um, and yeah, then so you have the middle bit, which obviously is modular, so you can maybe swap this out into different versions and then another engine piece in the front. That's how I set it up and I think it worked out really, really well. Okay, so um, yeah, before we go inside, I'll show you the conveyor system, how I made it work really. Uh, because like I mentioned, you can obviously uh, load and unload the ship through the, uh, the new conveyor system. So I've connected up the, uh, the cargo units all together and then they're connected through these two tubes inside is a, a device which I'll show from the inside that connects up to these connectors so you can uh, extract stuff from it and then on the other side I'll show you that we have da -da -da, a couple of collectors and these are all connected to the cargo units so you can load and unload the ship in a very very easy way we've also got a fuel nozzle here uh, very simple this connect straight to the uh, to the reactors inside so basically what it means is that you can take a ship and fuel up your ship without having to do anything but connect another ship to it um, and I think that's really really awesome okay so let's go and have a look inside of this ship and I must mention that all the three different variants that I've done have different interiors as well the only thing that remains the same is the bridge I haven't fiddled with that in any of the designs so here we have the entrance. We've got gravity, so that's good. And I should mention we've got two ways to enter this ship. We can get, we can go down here, or we can take a look here first. Uh, it both connects to the same place. We've got a look into the engine room there. Here we have another refinery, which really nicely splits up the ship. Uh, and you can walk all around it. Uh, with glass which is really cool so you can inspect uh, inspect and see what's going on we've got a bridge uh, a staircase going down and then you've got a little working area down here with more glass I uh, like to put the little uh, slides in front of it to give it that uh, industrial look I think that works out really well put a couple of lights in to make sure that uh, you know the ship is lit properly so this is where you come down if, you, if I took the other route and then you can take your spaceman into the engine compartment. Now here you can see that these are all conveyors and behind these conveyors are the uh, reactors. So that means that 
right behind there, the nozzle, the fuel nozzle is connected to these uh, conveyors and then through that you can fuel up the ship. We've got some uh, gyroscopes there of course and then we've got a way up here which puts us back into the, uh, the main floor or if we go up further into the bridge. Ta-da! Now this really m makes me need to say something. I really, really want a lift type block. Now I'm using the the uh, uh, the walkway to lift myself up using the the, the, the jetpack. Obviously, I'd like to be able to prevent that by using an actual lift. But you know, let's see if we get that. The bridge is simple. I mean, very simple design. Uh, Maybe I'll change the bridge. I don't know yet. I like it simple as it currently is. You can look all around and yeah, I think it works out quite well. All right, so let's go take a look at the second variant. I'm trying to be all sneaky here, keep it a surprise and not spoil it too fast. So let me know what you think about the first design. I'd really like to know what your thoughts are and uh, how you think I did the conveyor system and integrated it into the ship. Um, maybe you've got some tips for me. Maybe you're noticing a couple of things that I should do different. Let me know in that case. Uh, and let me know. I'd like to see the ships that, you, uh, that you've that you made using the conveyor systems. Obviously, also, I'd like to mention, if you guys like these ships, tell me because I'll put them up on the workshop for you to have a look at if you'd, uh, if you'd like. Okay, so let's take a look at the second variant. I'm very proud of this one, actually. This would be the Eclipse Mark II. This is the transport vessel. So this one is basically not for uh, cargo, but for people. And basically what you can see that the entire ship is pretty much the same, apart from the middle, which is now uh, a full compartment uh, that's closed off. The entrance is in the same place, and as you can see, the ship looks the same uh, for the rest of it. Now, I'll take my spaceman inside and show you the inside here. This is different, right? I mentioned the interiors uh, are different on all ships. We've got the same little window here that you can look through. However, there's no refinery in the middle here. Instead, it's a big-ass hallway, basically, that you can look all around. And this is like the main lift area. I'll take you through this here first, which is basically just a lounge that you can just walk through very simply. Uh, simple med bay for all your needs. Two computers here and some more in the back. Very simple. This would be the Wi-Fi area where you go if you need to uh, Skype your parents or something. Okay, so here is yeah some more space. Here you can see another part of the conveyor system where you your fuel gets injected through to uh, fill the reactors. So like I mentioned, the uh, uh, lift upwards is just a bridge, and that's absolutely the same. So I'll skip that. Instead, I'll go down and show you that I've blocked off the engine compartment on this one because obviously you don't want any passengers fiddling in that area, so it's blocked off. And this is the bit I am most proud of. And I'll have to show you this from the outside as well because it looks absolutely amazing. I've made a couple of rooms for people to stay in. And I've given them names uh, or I've, I've uh, put them in subcategories. So this is room one, which is the medium type, medium size. Very cool little room here. Lots of windows. You can actually see the three, the third ship in the background there. Uh, and I've given I've given all these rooms the, the bed, the beds, if you could call them that. Okay, so this is room one, medium, and now we can take you through the hallway and you'll find that in this ship I've put the gravity generator, not in the back but in the middle because obviously this ship needs uh, gravity more to the uh, to the front of the ship as well, so I can actually walk. Here is the, uh, the main corridor, I guess, that we're walking through right now with all the glass, and here we have room two, which is the conference room. If we had tables and stuff, I would put a little table here in the middle. However, you know, for now, it could function as a, a normal bedroom as well. Um, but yeah, I like it because it's it's more square, so it could function as a conference room. All the way in the back, we have two more rooms, room three and four, and these are the small type rooms. So these are quite small. This one has two windows, and yeah, it's uh, it's plenty for one person, I guess. There we have Earth in the background. And on the other side, we have the moon down there. 
Anyway, here is room number four, which is even smaller. One window, very, very small. And, you know, a single bed for us lonely folk. All right. I'll show you this from the outside as well. Like I mentioned, it looks really, really stunning. It really looks like a busy ship inside, and that's exactly what I want because it's obviously a transport, a, uh, yeah, a transport ship. So you want it to look busy and alive inside. Just a, another quick pan around the ship to give you an idea. Same fuel injector nozzle thing, and yeah, it, it's pretty much like a ferry. I guess you could call it that. Um, with all the glass. Okay, so here we have the bottom layer, which looks really, really busy. It really looks like people are in there and it's alive and yeah, I think it's awesome. I really, really think it's awesome. I'll show you from the other side as well. You can see the computer screens through the windows, which is awesome as well. And it's the interior walls uh, that make it so cool because obviously they have little lights on them and they make it all cozy and, and cool inside. All right, so let's go and take a look at the third variant that I did. Obviously, we need a ship that can carry ships. You don't want your ships just clinging to the side of the other one. So instead, what I've made is a landing pad ship. I've called it the Eclipse Mark III uh, parking ship parking vessel actually identical to the other ones uh, interior is a little different and the modular bit in the middle is changed into two landing pads and you can see I've actually put two little ships here it's got some lights um, are they on yes they're on uh, yeah this little ship here is just a tiny little transport thing with no purpose however this one is actually one that could maybe fuel up your ship it's got a collector on the top uh, that would fill up this cargo th unit there and then you can maybe eject uranium through the nozzles here to fill up the ship so two little landings pad obviously I've made the middle of the ship out of heavy armor blocks to make sure it can withstand all the thrusters uh, pushing on to the blocks the front is different uh, is the same sorry the front is the same as well as the back and I'll show you the interior this one has another another um, a door uh, I've put a little stair here with a slope underneath it to uh, make it a bit more thick and let's go and have a look the inside is actually very boring very simple um, here you see the the windows with the, the bars on the side which I've actually removed on the transport ship to make it more of a visual uh, experience of course conveyor system computer system very simple you can go down there which is obviously not for uh, for anything else because this is blocked off it's only the engine compartment now uh, bridge is the same so there's really no point in showing you that and that's it for this ship very simple what I've done as well I've actually and I'll show you that on the transport ship because that one has the most functions I've actually named all the items correctly to make it very very uh, simple to understand exactly what is what so I'll go to the bridge real quick yeah, here we are and I'm gonna show you all the names so here we have on the left, we have the uh, the beacon, of course, which I've placed in the back of the ship, the Eclipse Mark II transport vessel, fuel intake, that's basically the, uh, the collector that's on the side, the gate, that's the, uh, the door on the back, I can show you that like this, you can see the, the door in there. And we can close it up. And then we have the rooms that I said, room one, medium, large, small, and small. I've called them that, the gravity generator. Uh, the rest is obviously simple, gyroscopes, interior lights, um, refinery external, because that's the uh, refinery on the back. The cargo unit also has the refinery in internal in this list. And for the rest, it's all uh, just default names. Now I wanna show you how these ships fly and I'll show you that on the cargo ship. 
give you a good idea of how these babies handle. I think they're quite good. They've got about six gyros. This one has one extra. Or they all have one extra, sorry. Because this is supposed to be like where you scan your ticket before you go into ship or something like that. Uh, but yeah, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's It's got quite a lot of thrusters, as you've seen. I haven't counted them, to be honest. But uh, it's plenty. I'll just enable the heads-up display for you. Um, which will also give you an idea of the beacons and where they're placed. I've placed them in the back right underneath the refinery. And you can see right here, I've named them uh, with their proper names. Uh, Eclipse Mark 1, 2, and 3, Cargo, Transport, and Parking Vessel. And there's a little parking beacon just flying about here in the background. In case, you know, we get lost. Anyway, so we have first person view, which is pretty cool. And I'll just drift this baby around some corners and show you. It turns with this speed, which is quite all right. Uh, yeah, four gyroscopes and 29 thrusters. Forward puts me at 34% power. And yeah, as you can see, turning is not, not a big problem. Can go up as well. Ta -da -da. The coolest thing, obviously, is to drift around corners. <laughs> so yeah, I really would like to know what you think about these ships. I think they're really cool. I'm thinking of maybe doing some other uh, modular versions. Obviously now we have the cargo, the transport and the parking. I could do a military one or a scout one, but I didn't know yet for sure whether I wanted to make this a military exercise because obviously so far this is civilian and industrial. So yeah, I uh, I wasn't sure yet, but let me know what you think because I'd uh, I'd really like to know. Maybe you have some other ideas that I haven't um, yeah uh, discovered yet or experienced or looked at yet. Um, obviously there are a lot of different things that you could do and. You know, sometimes when you try and think of it, you can't really think of it. So let me know what you think. Maybe you have any suggestions for them to, uh, yeah, for me to change on these ships. And again, if you would like to see these yourself and you'd like to have a walk through them, just give me uh, a heads up and I'll happily put them on the workshop for you. Um, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please give us a subscribe because uh, you can expect more of this awesome stuff. Uh, give us a like. I really appreciate if you could like the video because uh, the likes on the videos make it very easy for me to understand what to upload more. Um, if something isn't liked a lot, I'm going to make the assumption that you know people don't really like it, so uh, I don't do it anymore. So like the videos uh, and give us a subscribe. And yeah, feel free to comment if you like. Any any criticism or feedback or suggestions or questions, I am more than willing and happy to answer. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.